What's going on everybody? James here from Artificial Entertainment and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. And today we're going to be taking a quick look at Conduits, which is a node that is within the Animation Blueprint State Machine. So let's go take a quick look and see what these do. Alright, so I have here a project that I just kind of loaded everything into. Um, got a few extra things in it that we don't really need, but... Um, in here we've got an animation blueprint that I have made specifically for this tutorial. So it's got the casting to the third person character, getting the movement component, and then just setting as simple is moving variable. So this is all very basic, but the two things I want you to pay attention to are this en um, enumeration value and this boolean value. Both of these are very, very, very important. Now, the reason why is because the way a conduit works is if we open up the animation uh, state machine here, is that it works as a transition point, kind of like a pivot point between main states in your animation blueprint. So what it does is if we right click, we just go add conduit, and we are gonna be using sort of like death animations for this. Um, so I'll just go death. Now, the way that this works is that it's a one-to-one, -one, many to one, many to many. It, you can basically use this to hook up as many things as you want. For right now, we'll just worry about taking idle and moving and hooking them up into the death conduit. And again, this is just a transition point. Now, the values that are going to be used to control this, you need two of them to make it work properly. The first one is a Boolean value to be able to make it so that way it can be put into the conduit itself because it actually has its own transition rules. But the other thing that I recommend is not really the way you have to do it, but it is a recommended way is to use an enumerator to be able to control the branches that it's going to execute after. So for example, if I open up the uh, blueprint for my character here, you'll see when I press F, it's gonna set a value on my enumerator, which is forward. And my enumerator is just none, forward, and backwards, very basic. Then after it does that, it's gonna set dead to true. So if I go into here, and look at the event graph here. I've got both of those being called from my third person character into my animation blueprint. So what we can do is use these as the transition rules for the actual graph itself. If we go ahead and go to the transition rule between idle and death, let me go ahead and just open this up. We'll take the death direction, drag it off and get it, pull and get an enum, and we're gonna get not equal. And this is the reason why I put that none in there because the null value actually allows you to be able to use that. If it's not equal to that, then it's gotta be something else. We can actually take this, highlight, copy it, and we're gonna do the same thing for moving into the death conduit as well. So we'll go ahead and just hook those up just like that. So now that we have a way for our idle and moving to go into our death conduit, which again is the pivot point, we also want to give the transition rule for it to stay in and keep executing branches that are connected to it. And that's where that Boolean value comes in. Because when we open it up, and again, all I did is click on the conduit here. So it's death, double click, open it up, and it's literally a simple transition rule. So we can take dead, hook this into the result. So now, so long as dead is true, it'll execute whatever branches are above it, but if dead is not true, it won't be able to execute anything above it. Now, it's not that simple, but that's ultimately the idea behind the way the conduits work. So now what we're going to do is make a couple of simple states. So we'll go first state is going to be death forward, just so I can match it to my enums. And we'll put this over here. And then we're going to go death at another state. I'm going to go death backwards. Now, what we can do to be able to make it so we can transition to these, just go ahead and pull these up a little bit, give us a little bit more room, is we can open up these transition rules here, and we're going to get the death direction, get it, and then from here we can actually just do a simple pull off and go enum equals, and we're going to see if it's equal to forward. And if it is, we're going to go into this state. However, if we highlight this, just copy it just for ease, and then go to the transition rule from our conduit death to death backwards, we can take this, paste it in, and change forward to backwards, and done. Simple, easy, right? So now we've made transition rules for it to be able to go into the conduit, which again, nice, nice little pivot point to be able to control which one of these it's going to execute. So now that we have something set up here, you know, you can kind of see more of what I was referring to, where we have a pivot point where it's going to choose whichever enumeration value is currently the true value. And where an enum can only be one value at a time, this is what allows you to make sure that you only have one branch active at a time and it's not trying to go back and forth between multiple branches. Because you can have like 50 of these hooked up to the conduit. I have not seen any limitations to it. So you guys can go as crazy as you want. This is just the base premise of how to be able to get it set up. Now I'm going to open up the death forward here and I'm going to put my 
death animation that's of him falling forward and then we're going to go into death backwards and i'll take the other one that's of him falling in a bit more of a backwards manner so right now what we've set up is whenever dead is true it's going to go up and you know allow the execution back and forth between death forward and death back if we set up back and forth transition rules and we've also told it that if the enumeration for death direction is equal to, or not equal to none, so there is a death direction for it to go into, we want to go into the death. So this is the reason why we set up the two different values, because we want to use the enumeration value for going in and out of the death conduit, but we want to use a boolean value to tell it when to stay in that conduit's active state. So I hope that makes sense. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll compile and we'll save. And we'll go over to the BP third person. Don't mind all of this. That is things that I was messing around with on a different day. So you guys don't have to worry yourselves about that. Mainly that we want to focus on now is this. So I've got an F whenever I press it. It's setting that enum value to forward and setting dead to true. So once I press F, it should do the forward falling death animation. So let's see. We'll go ahead and press play. And then bam, look at that. We got that nice forward falling death animation and he stays in place. Now... That's how to be able to make it fall forward. Now let's say we want it to fall backwards. All we got to do is go back to the animation blueprint and change that enum value from forward to backwards instead. And if we compile, and go ahead and just drag this down a little bit and hit play. Now we're falling backwards. So you can see the enum value is controlling and it's staying in that value because again, we haven't told it that it can go back and forth yet. But how to be able to do that is very easy, though I will say you wouldn't necessarily do this with a death sequence, so this might look a little weird, but I at least want to show you guys how to be able to do it. So just like with any other state, we want to make sure that it has state or uh, transition rules for going both forward and backwards. So we're going to set both of these with a bidirectional system. I mean, technically we could also use bidirectional, but I haven't used this. And a lot of times when I press it, it says it's beta or experimental, and I don't really want to mess around with it. So I just set up the transition rules manually. That's my preference. You guys can do whatever you want. But this option is up here. Now, what we can do, though, is we're going to take the not equals value. So we're going to get the death direction, and we'll just copy from the um, death or idle to death. So we can get just that not equal value. And then we're going to go into death forward to the death conduit. And we're going to open up that transition rule. And that's where we're going to paste it. And that's, again, just to kind of recap real quick. That's just the death direction enum with a not equal to none. Now we're going to change this from none to forwards. Because we want it when it's not equal to forwards to get out of that transition. And if we control C and then do the same thing for backwards. But this time, you know, just as we did before, change it to backwards and connect it into the result. So now we've made it so that way you can go back and forth between the two states. And if we compile, save, and go back to the third person character, I'm going to delete this off and I actually have uh, the necessary code here for this part. And what this is going to do is that it's going to flip flop between forward and backwards and then set dead to true at the end. Now you don't really have to do it this way. This was just me playing around with seeing how the values are set. Um, but ultimately, you can set dead first, you can set enums first, it really doesn't ultimately change much of anything. So we'll go ahead and we'll click play. And now if I press F, we're going to fall forwards, press F again, we're going to fall backwards. And I can do this over and over and over and make them do like a nice little kind of wiggly dance, you know. But we can do this as much as we want. But again, we don't have the ability to go back into our base state because we have not told the system, hey, we're going to reset these values, now go back to the base state. Now, to set this up, the reason why I, and that's the reason why I wanted to do this part in the video is because in order to do this, it actually requires an extra step than you might think. So what we're going to do is set up the standard transition rule from def to idle. So we're just going to hook those up there and hook this one up into moving. And we'll start with idle. So we'll open up death conduit to the idle state. And we're going to get the death direction, get, and we're going to look for an enum equals, and we're going to set it to none. So enum equals none for the death direction. We can go back into the state. And this is just more to show you like if you had rifle, pistol, shotgun, sniper rifle, like all, all different types of weapons or stances and things like that. You would use this enumeration and then when it is equal to none, it can go back into its non-weaponized state. So this is more what I'm trying to show you. Now what we're going to do though is we're going to take basically the same thing. So we'll actually go back into our death to idle, control C, and then we're going to go in death to moving. Because this is where we're going to make a slight adjustment to make sure it transitions 
properly by grabbing our is moving variable. This is something that you generally always have within your animation blueprint to be able to control your moving and idle states. So what we're going to do is just drag off, get an and boolean. So it only goes into this transition if def direction is equal to none and is moving is true. And these are the things that would be necessary for us to go into our moving state. Now, realistically, you don't need to have this transition rule because if moving is not true and it does go down into this branch, it's going to go over to idle fairly quickly. But in some instances, you might actually see the moving animation try to play a slight bit before going to the idle, and you can't also ensure that it's always going to use this transition rule. Because ultimately, you can set, you know, the duration of blends, you can add curves, you can add event settings and bindings um, that's going to be specific to each individual transition. So being able to ensure that it's always going to go to idle if we're not moving or moving if we are, is very, very helpful. So now that we have that set up, the last thing we need to do is make it so our variables are reset. And again, just like I had with the other one, I've already prepared it. So just to make time a little shorter. So we have here, whenever I press C, I'm setting the death direction to none. And then you can see there's a delay here of 0.2 seconds and then setting dead to false. The reason why I have to do this, and you will find this as well, is because you can't set Boolean values and enum values that are controlling a conduit. They can't be set at the same time. Um, there's, I've tried so many different ways to be able to make this work. Um, and ultimately, I found that there needs to be a delay in between the values. You can set the Boolean value first and then the enumeration value after but you need to have a delay of some kind. You don't need to use a delay node specifically because you can use things like anim notifies or other sorts of things that are going on in your code to be able to actually to tell when to set dead or you know combat or whatever value you're having set back to its default. But ultimately you wanna make sure that the enum value and the Boolean value are being set at a different frame. You won't notice it though, but it is important because if we go and compile and save this, I go ahead and just hit play. You'll see that we can go backwards, forwards, and now if I press C, we go back to our idle state. And there's really no blend that's happening. You don't really see that two second delay, but it is happening to be able to make sure that the values are set accordingly. So that's something to keep in mind. But as you can see that we're switching in between all of our states, we're going death backwards into death forwards. And then when I hit C, we're clearing all the values and going into our idle state. So this is realistically the gist of conduits. Um, you know, it's used as a transition or pivot point for different states. And you can have weapon states, crouching states, aiming states, whatever you wanted to do for these, but it does really help create a nice smooth pivot between multiple transitions. And the other cool thing is too, is that you can use conduits to be able to reference cached poses. So if you have one pose or one state machine, that's all just your pistol animations and another one, that's all your rifle animations and all of this. And you want to make sure they flow together accordingly you could use instead of doing it like as a normal state you could just input a cached pose which i don't think i have any on this project yeah so i don't have any cache poses on here but you would be able to get the cache pose and plug this into the output animation so you could have an entire state machine being referenced by the conduit and just have simple idle and moving as the pivot points and everything else just works off of whatever enumeration is active pistol rifle shotgun sniper two-handed sword sword and shield you know it doesn't matter whatever it is you want to do you can go as crazy as you want with it but conduits are an amazing tool to make multiple stances weapon types and things like that happen make sure that they happen smoothly so I hope you guys enjoyed. That's it for today's video. Um, we are going to be doing more videos coming up soon, um, going over some cool things like weapon swaps and things like that, utilizing this uh, particular conduit system. So that's why I wanted to do a simple video going over the system. But if you guys have any questions, concerns, comments, um, you know, feel free to leave them in the comments section. Or we also, you know, do have that great Discord where we have people that are helping each other out. We have people that are posting stuff and showing off stuff. So I really want to keep the activity going. If you guys want to join in, the link will be at the bottom of the video. But again, that's all for now. Stay animated, y'all.